This is an entirely new type of hybrid aircraft I've been developing over the past month to find out if a rocket powered drone can actually fly. Taking off vertically using electric motors, transitioning to forward flight and then using a powerful rocket engine to accelerate to a super fast top speed. Way. For the past four years, I've been building and flying rocket propelled aeroplanes Whoa. here on the Project Air YouTube channel, seeing a fair amount of success alongside a few spectacular failures. But this would be the first time I'd attempted to build a rocket powered drone. And this latest challenge would turn out to be rather difficult to say the least, involving a ton of testing, experimentation, crashing and rebuilding before we finally got it right. The plan was to take a basic five inch racing quadcopter and combine it with a model rocket. Like with my previous rocket planes, a powerful model rocket motor would fire mid-air acting as a booster stage that would allow it to fly to a higher top speed. The big question was though, would the drone spiral out of control or would its flight controller be able to keep it stable? The aims of this project were one, could we get this rocket drone to actually fly and two, could we get it to fly at over 100 miles an hour and survive? The first step was to build the drone that would become the test bed for this project. I've never built a race drone before, so I got my new helper, Emma, to put one together, as she's really great at building things like this. After a bit of problem solving, Emma had the drone assembled and ready for a first tentative hop into the air. <laughs> yes, it works! We got it working! Oh, I'm so pleased. It was now time for me to fly the drone outside and get used to flying at high speeds. I'd only ever flown a race quad a few times before, so needed a bit of practice flying from the perspective of the FPV feed through my video goggles. Before long though, I was comfortable pushing it and maneuvering around the trees. Now it was time for our first test to see how fast this drone would fly on electric power alone. So I fitted a small GPS device to the aircraft to gather data about the flight. So how fast was this five inch drone and how much faster would we need to go to make it over 100 miles an hour? Okay, stop. Read 98 kilometers an hour. There we go. So that was our top speed. As of today, let's see if it goes any faster with some rockets. <laughs> Careful. Small rocket motors, as you might already know, are used by hobbyists to launch model rockets. Inside the casing of a model rocket motor, solid fuel containing an oxidizer burns outwards from the center, and the hot gases from this reaction expand out of the specially shaped nozzle at super high speeds, propelling the rocket in the opposite direction. These rocket motors are usually set off electronically, with a small electronic igniter inserted into the nozzle where it touches the fuel. The resulting spark when power is applied to this igniter sets off the rocket, which burns until all of the fuel has run out. To test the same rocket engines we'd be using on the drone, we decided to try one out on a standard model rocket to see just how high it would go. Okay, ready? Yep. Five, four, three, two, one, ignition. <laughs> see it yep. straight ahead oh yeah oh <laughs> yay the parachute came out so that rocket engine was very very powerful as you saw the rocket went very high indeed so yeah what's going to happen when we go horizontal with one of those rocket engines on the drone we're gonna have to see aren't we <laughs> before jumping straight into strapping this large rocket to our drone we first needed to do some low power experiments to see if the onboard flight controller would keep the aircraft stable as the rocket fired the idea for keeping our rocket drone stable was to place the rocket motor along the nominal center of gravity on the drone which is the point at which the drone pivots theoretically as the rocket fires the drone motors will then be able to easily compensate for any instabilities through increasing and decreasing the RPMs as normal. Would this actually work though? We'd have to find out. 
I 3D printed a range of motor mounts for a range of different rocket motors, starting with some very small low thrust motors. I made a simple launch pad from foam board so that the rocket engine could be kept off the ground. Okay. With this test, we're going to be using fuses because fuses are actually like a very simple and reliable way of starting a rocket motor. What this test is all about is to see whether the drone is still stable when it has a rocket booster underneath it. It's not going to provide tons of thrust, but it will sort of boost us a little bit and show whether the flight controller can cope with the extra, you know, weird thrust that it's getting. So yeah, this is really a big proof of concept thing. Not sure if it's going to work, but that's what this test is for. Well, it's working. It's definitely working. Wow. Well, first rocket boosted test was a success. Let's go bigger. <laughs> These next motors were actually a little weird as they had pulsating irregular burns, but this was just not a problem for the flight controller. With these larger engines that had more thrust, the drone was now able to hover without as much power to the electric motors. Still smoking. Right, now it was time to go much larger. The previous rocket engines had produced just a few hundred grams of thrust, but now we were going to see what would happen if we fitted a rocket engine with kilograms of thrust to the bottom of the drone. If this worked and the drone didn't crash, we'd really be onto something. Right, so we've got an F-sized rocket engine here, and that's gonna go in this new adapter underneath. And now look at this thing. <laughs> that looks like it means business. So yeah, let's give it a test. Right, on my mark. Yep. So we're going to go for ignition in five, four, three, two, one. Oh, oh my goodness. You cooked it out. I pooped it out. <laughs> I'm through the smoke. Woohoo! <laughs> Right, coming in for a landing, quite close to us. Oh, oh no. yes, we, we did it. Nice. Success, another successful test flight. Yeah, sick. Now we proved that you could successfully strap a huge rocket to a drone without it crashing, it was time to radically modify this aircraft to make it much more streamlined, so we could attempt to beat our target of getting it over 100 miles an hour using the rocket booster. For this I decided the simplest idea would be to build an aerodynamic shell around the frame using model rocket parts. I reassembled the drone frame with the new 3D printed plates before reinstalling all of the electronics. The next step was to modify the model rocket components, removing the base of the plastic nose cone and cutting the fuselage tube in half so it could slot either side of the drone core. At this point I could glue in the centering rings for the rocket engine before turning attention to preparing the four balsa wood fins, which were delicately sanded into shape with curved leading and trailing edges which would reduce drag and help the drone to fly faster. These fins were then carefully aligned and securely glued to the lower fuselage tube to make up the fin can. And with that, we were making some real progress. I found with my previous project on this channel, the SR71, that gold is a great colour for these high-speed vehicles, as it really stands out against the sky and also against grassy fields, which is helpful for finding the aircraft if it makes a forced landing far away. So after adding a good few coats of this gold spray paint, I could prepare all of the parts for final assembly. But now how would I stop the 3D printed parts from melting? As you saw earlier, I 3D printed the rocket engine mount from plastic, but as it turned out from some static tests, 
Yes, this wasn't the best idea, as the plastic mount actually melted to the rocket engine during the burn, meaning I couldn't replace it. I needed to use a material that wouldn't melt, so I decided to print the exact same motor mount file in titanium, using PCBWay's Metal 3D Printing Service, as PCBWay is actually sponsoring this week's video with an ad. After uploading the file, receiving a quote and placing an order online, the part arrived in just a few days and could be unboxed ready to use. Anyone who has access to CAD software can design and upload almost anything to PCBWay's website, for it to be manufactured remotely and delivered just a week or so later, which is really cool. I definitely recommend checking out the PCBWay website and playing around with the online configurator to see what sorts of parts you could get manufactured for your projects. You can get components made in all sorts of ways. There's so many things I can't even remember what's there. You just need to check them out on the website. I will definitely be using PCBWay again as it opens so many doors to so many different projects that I've been wanting to do on this channel. So check out PCBWay with this link or click the link in the description. With the rocket engine problem now solved, it was time to add the battery mount and screw everything together to prepare for the first test hover with the aero shell. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Take that, SpaceX. <laughs> so, the drone still flew absolutely fine, but would the large fins make changing direction at high speeds more difficult? We'd have to wait for the first high speed test flight up at the flying field. Back in the workshop, now I just needed to add an FPV camera and importantly, the remote rocket ignition system. I found the simplest solution was to simply reuse the system on my SR-71 Blackbird featured in the previous Project Air video. So I scavenged all the parts I needed from that aircraft and then soldered them together with the drone electronics. Whoa, blimey. <laughs> Finally, I needed to solve the problem of where to stick a camera on this drone, which is easier said than done. My idea was to cut a hole in the nose cone that could be fitted with a transparent vacuum form canopy from a model aeroplane kit. This would provide a highly streamlined bubble to fit the FPV camera in, facing at such an angle that I could fly the aircraft at an extreme angle of attack, while seeing the ground and the horizon. Time for the first test flight of the complete rocket drone. So let's put this in the car, head up to the flying fields, and then we'll see just how fast this thing can go. So let's crack on with it. was to test the rocket drone incrementally at higher and higher speeds. But before fitting any rocket engines, I wanted to just fly the aircraft on electric power alone, using the FPV goggles for the first time to check the angle of the camera was correct. I'm going to take off sort of line of sight and then I'll stand next to you. Little did I know though that everything was about to go very wrong very quickly. Three, two, one, taking off. <laughs> So I'm facing us right now, right, putting FPV goggles on. Oh no. Something's yeah. gone wrong. Oh, I've got the controls the wrong way around. Right, I'm going to try and bring it down. Oh god. This is going to go badly. I gained altitude to give myself more time to work the problem, but it wasn't looking good. I'm going to have to focus. What's gone wrong? Oh no, I'm going in. Oh. The controls are all the wrong way around. Oh dear. Oh, that doesn't look good. What a disaster. Emma and I headed back to base to make a cup of tea, get out the whiteboard and figure out what went wrong. And I had a feeling that it had something to do with the camera. I think this is it. So this was the rear, that's the front. And the camera was on the rear. Is it not meant to be? No, I think the camera was on the back of the drone. So left and right were wrong. Front and and forwards right. and backwards were wrong as well. All you like, had going was the thrust, really. Yeah, so the, the camera bubble was here and it was facing downwards, like, you know, down at the ground. Yeah. So wait, that means that, yeah, that was it. So and I just put- the controls. I basically inversed the controls by having the camera on the back of the drone rather than the front of the drone. 
Yeah, so flying normally was absolutely fine. That was as it had been on the previous test, but then when I put the goggles on, everything was the wrong way around. <laughs> ah, oh, no. that would be it. Right. Guess we should just rebuild this with the camera on the right side of the drone. <laughs> okay. After a few days of rebuilding, I could hope that all of this extra effort wouldn't be wasted again. I'm nervous. So test flight one will just be a quick take off, go around the field, check everything's working, then land. Then test flight two is going to be the first rocket powered test flight with an F size. And that was the same size that was on the SR-71. If we survive all of those test flights, it'll be a miracle because this thing is such an experimental aircraft. Nothing like this has been flown before. It's a bit rainy, but I think on many historic test flights in the UK, that has been the case. Now with the camera on the front of the drone rather than the rear, I was confident that the reverse controls issue was solved. Would this be the case though? And how fast would the drone go on electric power alone? You ready? Yep. Yep. Three, two, one. Goggles on. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go from left to right, okay? God, this thing is well fast. Oh. I'm gonna try and bring it down. Tell me when I'm nearly at the floor. Nearly. Well, it flew. It flew. That was that so went, fast. That went really smooth. It was so fast. That. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, no, right. Let's try and find it, see if it's in one piece. Oh, is it okay? I think the only damage is on the, as far as I can tell, is, is just on the tape join here. Oh, nice. oh good. Oh, what relief. Now to check the GPS to see how fast the drone had gone. The speed, oh, 121. This aero shell uh, with the rocket uh, sort of shell on it, it's definitely helped to some extent. Now it's time for the second test flight with the goal to fire a rocket engine mid-air for the first time. Starting on board, recording. For this flight, I decided to fit a high definition camera to the aircraft, pointing towards the tail so we'd have a better view of the rocket ignition. Could we go faster than 100 miles an hour and land safely? Yep. Okay, taking off. Yep. Okay, lining up for the run. Okay, pushing throttle to full and three, two, one, ignition. Okay, I'm going to come in for a landing now. Keeping the nose up, I'm losing signal. We've got a lot of static. Pretty above me that one. Okay, flaring and three, two, one. <laughs> First ever rocket drone, successful takeoff, landing, flight, etc. Woo! So, the big question had we achieved our targets and built a rocket drone capable of flying over 100 miles an hour? Read. Oh, no! <laughs> High five! High five! Oh, that was brilliant! So we did it, we actually got this thing to fly, go over 100 miles an hour and survive. So that's all missions complete, which is quite extraordinary really for this sort of uh, highly experimental aeroplane, or not aeroplane, I don't even know what this thing is. So what did we actually learn from this project? Well, one, drones shaped like rockets do actually go a bit faster, which is uh, a bit surprising, but 
Uh, then again, maybe kind of obvious because drones usually are a bit brick shaped, aren't they? But the most important thing that we learned was that this whole concept, a rocket booster drone is possible and the flight controller can completely stabilize a rocket on the bottom of a drone, which is absolutely ridiculous, really. I didn't think it was going to work as well as it did. And finally, there are advantages to having a vertical takeoff and landing rocket powered vehicle over a more conventional aeroplane. If you've seen my previous video with the SR-71, this definitely was a lot easier to launch. Now, I think it's worth remembering that this was only a five inch quad with a pretty sort of standard setup with a four cell battery and not all that much power. So if you want to see me build something that's a lot more powerful and uses maybe even bigger rocket engines, then type in the comments section, let me know. And you never know, I might build an even bigger, more powerful version of this one. Thank you very much to you for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Here's a link to another video that I think you might like if you got to the end of this video. And yeah, subscribe to the channel. There's a link down here somewhere. Thank you very much to my Patreons and I'll see you on the next one. See you later.